Um, in March of 2007, uh, I was embedded with um, a military uh, police unit. And this one unit um, wanted to check up on Iraqi traffic police. This was March of 2007 in West Baghdad. Uh, this was as the surge troops were, were just coming into this place. And uh, it was a scary place. And I didn't even know that Iraq really had, you know, traffic cops. That seemed kind of, you know, like a luxury that uh, an extreme situation like, like Iraq would, would not um, allow. In fact, um, these guys were more like, like almost paramilitary cops. You know, they had, you know, the full, you know, battle rattle on. They had, they had armor. Um, and they were holed up in this really just filthy... I don't even want to call it a building, even by um, the bombed-out standards of, of, of Iraq back in the day. It was more like a tower. It was like a crumbling tower. And the, um, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, soldier, the soldier I was with, I'm not going to give ranks or anything like that. You'll understand why in a second. Um, the soldier I was with, you know, speaking through his interpreter, goes to talk with this, you know, uh, wheezing, uh, strangely jovial, but also kind of nervous, uh, big Iraqi cop with a mustache who's acting, you know, like a badass. And the, the interview starts out, as I'm just, you know, taking notes on this, uh, with the guy, you know, going through his checklist of things that his chain of command needs him to ask uh, to the Iraqi traffic cop. You know, how are you on guns? How are you on ammo? How are you on fuel? How are you, you know, finding uh, living conditions over here? You know, what are you seeing? You know, on and on. You know, the boring stuff. And then uh, the Iraqi cop asks, you know, the interpreter to say something. He goes on the spiel for a long time, and the interpreter's face just goes pallid. And the guy doesn't even know if he really wants to ask this question. And, uh, you know, the soldier uh, says, you know, what, what's he saying? And the interpreter goes, uh, he wants to know who you are fucking in Iraq. And the guy, you know, here's this, you know, American who means so well who has no idea how to answer this question. His training is not prepared for this. Uh, you know, here he was thinking he was going to drink some Pepsi, uh, maybe some tea with this guy, you know, fill out his checklist, go home before anything blew up. And now he's, you know, you can see even, you know, behind the sunglasses that for some reason he's decided he's still going to wear, you know, indoors, um, that he's thinking how if he says one wrong thing, it's an international incident. Uh, and so he, you know, he says, um, can the interpreter just clarify that he meant what, you know, it seemed like the guy was saying. And indeed, he did. And so diplomatically, he says, you know, as deployed soldiers, uh, we, you know, do not, you know, have sex uh, with, with local women here. Uh, that's not part of our protocol. And the Iraqi, who now seems like he's enjoying this, uh, starts to be like, you Americans think you're too good for Iraqi women? What? I don't understand. You know, don't you think we have beautiful women here in Iraq? And, and the guy's trying very hard to control himself. And eventually the Iraqi takes mercy on him as, as the soldier stumbles through some answer, uh, in which he very diplomatically tries to put out this fire. Um, and the Iraqi says, you know what? The worst thing about this job is... I'm here for days at a time, and when I get home, I'm just ready to eat my life alive. And the Americans are looking around like, the soldier looks at me, he realizes there's a reporter in this room, he's trying to make sure that the interpreter gets everything in tone, not just in substance, entirely correctly. And then the Iraqi just gestures for his friend, who'd been, who'd been bringing them Pepsis, and says like, you know, get in here. This guy's so old. He might have only been like 50 years old in the, you know, war had, you know, weathered him or anything like that, but he looked like he was 70, you know, he comes in with a tray, cigarettes are, you know, dangling from his, you know, yellow, disgusting mustache, his, you know, his teeth are really gross, uh, he's maybe about, 50, you know, I don't know, something like 85 pounds wet, um, really, you know, really skinny, and uh, can immediately, you know, tell what's going on here, I'm guessing this, you know, Iraqi traffic cop had done this before, and he goes, well, you know, check this stuff out. And this old guy takes out his phone, like a regular, like, crappy Nokia phone. Uh, and the traffic guy goes, you got to look at my friend's phone here. He's got, like, 300 sex videos on this thing. 
just check, you know, check this out. And you know, the soldier's like, you know what? This has been a great visit. It's time to go.